Morning YouTubers, so this is just a video to walk you through a fan governor mechanism that I've built, it's just a prototype. So basically what a fan governor does is create some resistance to the unwinding of, uh, well in this instance, a clock mainspring through the creation of air resistance. So as the fan spins, creates air resistance, which then translates um, up through the gear train and then applies a counter force to the torque that's produced through the unwinding of the spring. So where you'll see these commonly are wind up uh, music boxes. So the wind up music box mechanism has the fan governor so as it unwinds at a consistent pace playing the tune in the um, appropriate at the appropriate speed. Um, also Alarm clocks or so striking wind up clocks, they all have a fan governor mechanism. Um, we've got the you know the old fashioned ones anyway. As the fan governor slows down the unwinding of the spring used to drive the hammers in the striking mechanism. So the reason I've produced this is I've made a mechanical whistling bird automaton. So if you have a look at some of my other YouTube videos, you'll see the prototype of the bird, uh, but at the moment it's crank powered. What I want to do is change it to use the clock mechanism, uh, so the clock mainspring. However, without the fan, the mainspring will unwind pretty explosively. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll give you a demonstration. I'll show you how it works without the fan governor. So if I take the fan governor off and I wind up mechanism oh haven't got the key one second all right back so this is the key mechanism key mechanism key all right so wind it up has that satisfying click sound i used to repair wind up for one of my i guess my other hobbies is um repairing and restoring wind up mechanical clocks and I have to say, once you get one of the little small clocks going, that little ticking sounds quite beautiful. It's what, probably what I love about um, the, all the old antique clockwork. So it makes them like they're little living machines. So without the fan governor, this mainspring will unwind pretty explosively. So the other, um, the other principle, I suppose, to um, bear into consideration is the reduction in torque produced through using gear trains. So torque, is, you can, I suppose you can think of torque as uh, the force that, a force that creates rotation. And without the gear train, the torque produced by that mainspring will be intense. So it'll be incredibly, uh, inc incredibly hard. Don't know whether that's the right word. But as you go through and you step through other gears, so the gear ratios, so this first gear is about oh, a 70 tooth gear, and the next one's about a 15 tooth gear. So it's a little bit more than four times, um, so a ratio of four to one. So basically what it means is if you go from a gear four times as large as the next one, the torque goes down by a quarter. And what it means is then by the time you cascade that through multiple gears, I can stop the force on that produced, so the torque produced by that mainspring pretty easily just with my finger. However, if I tried to stop the force from the mainspring just by holding that large gear, the foot, it would actually be quite quite hard to uh, stop, which is where then the fan governor, um, well, I guess why the principle works. So what you want to do is you create enough gears and with enough gear ratio that the force that's produced by the fan is sufficient to slow down your main driving gear to whatever speed that you want. So effectively, you'd be able to produce enough gear ratio that you can have a very small fan. So what I'll do is I'll show you what happens if I release. So this is, um, I'll just wind it back up a little bit. So this is without 
any fan governor at all. Okay. Okay, so that was about four seconds, I suppose. So now what I'll do is I'll put on the first governor. So this is um, an initial one that I made. It's probably around the size that I would like. Probably I'd like one that's only, you know, up to there, that size. So when I put this on, Okay, and I wind it back up. What you will see is that the unwinding of the coil has slowed down. So the first one was about four seconds. So with this um, fan on there, let's see. So about 12 seconds. So that's about uh, three times the length. Now, if we then put on this larger one, and wind it up. So we went from four sec, about four seconds with no fan governor on. We went to about 12 seconds with the smaller fan governor on. So we increased the length of time or slowed down the full unwind of the coil uh, by a factor of three. And now if we put this one on, you can see it's considerably slower. So there's 10 seconds. Twenty seconds. And we'll call that a practical stop. So that was twenty-five seconds. So we went from four seconds to 12 seconds to 25 seconds. So as you can see, every time you increase the size of the governor, the effect of the size is obviously it creates greater air resistance. I imagine if you actually capped the tops and the bottom, so as it created pockets of air, that would probably reduce it uh, down even more. So the time, what I want though, is to have one that's about um, that size. So to be able to do that, what I need to do is use enough gears or with um, larger ratios, it's probably because I really don't want to have any more than these four four gear trains. So the four gears, so we've got the one, the one gear there, the second gear train there, the third one there, the fourth. So I really don't want any more than the four of those due to the size. So what I need to do is increase the gear ratio and the effect of that will be that the torque that will be required to slow down this mainspring will be far less. So remembering that the air resistance that's created through the winding of this, the effect of that slows down the unwinding of the coil, but that is proportional to the torque that is um, imparted on this last gear from the first one translated through the gear train. So if I want to have one this size, which is about a third of the size, then probably what I want to do, just you know, top of my head, then probably what I'll look at doing 
is doubling. Um, if I double the gear ratio down, then I should need, well, if I double the gear ratio, I'll need about half. Um, hopefully I can then go about half the size of that. If I do it even more, obviously I can get smaller. So the gears, I made these gears uh, on a gear program that I bought online called Gearotic. Uh, it's really great. It's about, I'm in Australia, so it cost me about 150 US to purchase it. Uh, you can use the, the free online version just for, you know, testing, etc. but you can't print unless you purchase it. Um, pretty easy learning curve. There's lots of YouTube videos online um, that walk it through and a lot easier than trying to use an engineering program, which has a very steep learning curve. So what I'll do is I'll go back and rebuild these gears. So I'll probably go from 70 tooth gears to about 150 tooth gears. So I'll double and then I want to double the large gears. And then if I halve the small gears, then it's actually um, a factor of four. So that will be, I will probably have to end up with a very small fan, which is exactly what I want. Now, because these apply, what I'll be doing is instead of using the, these are the pinion, so the large ones, and we call a wheel, smaller one a pinion. Um, so what I'll be doing is creating um, cage gears. So basically a cage gear. So effectively like that. You might have seen them in old, um, you know, Da Vinci mechanisms and etc. Um, very common. So that the benefit of using this is you can make them incredibly small. So if you look at pretty much all wind up clocks, well the vast majority of wind up clocks, you'll actually see a combination of normal gears, uh, pinions, and then also these cage gears. Um, to be small. So basically you just use here. You know, I'll use some um, high tensile piano wire and then I'll probably make the tops out of brass. Um, drill holes slightly smaller than the piano wire and then I'll drive them in using my drill press. Um, so the benefit of that is I can have them quite small. So I'll be probably um, looking at the wheels about 120 to 150 um, teeth. And then the new pinions, which will be cage gears, are probably looking at between six and nine um, or something like that. I'm not going to do the maths for the ratio. Um, so we'll just say 120 to six or 150 to, um, to nine as a ratio. So substantial reductions by the time I get through. Um, what I'll do is I'll put a, um, a link to Gearonic in the um, comments if you're interested. It's not an advertising for Gearonic at all. Um, and when I have created the next mechanism, I'll post another video. Thanks heaps.